little story I want to start with, uh, which is the work that uh, Richard Tal has been doing. He is the 2017 uh, Nobel Prize winner for economics, and, uh, and I've been very fascinated about his work and how it intersects with all of us as l and professionals. I think his work represents the intersect of uh, looking at what we can learn from sociology, what we can learn from psychology, and what we can also learn from just generally looking at life with a lot of curiosity and common sense. So there are two things which I want to share with you from his work. One is the principle of uh, mental accounting. How many of you have heard about mental accounting? Okay, so some of us. Uh, and the second one is the principle about how, um, you know, why do we always break our New Year resolutions uh, year after year? So I'm going to share very quickly this couple of stories because I think are very, very relevant for us as l and leaders on how we look at uh, people's behavior because at the end of the day, learning is all about influencing that behavior, enabling people to become uh, a better potential self. So the, the concept of mental accounting uh, that he t talks about, Richard talks about, is how the color of the money is not all the same. And how we behave irrationally different when we receive money from a salary increase as opposed when we receive money from, let us say, winning a lottery prize or when we receive money from a gift. Behaviorally, we label that money differently in our own mind and we actually use that money very differently depending on what is the labeling that we've done. What's interesting about this is that it's irrational, but what's also interesting about it is that it's predictable. It's been researched that we will behave predictably rationally, which means that we can actually model the behavior that we want to leverage when it comes to uh, investments and budgets. Obviously, this has been used a lot in the development world uh, by providing uh, access to money to, for example, parents. Uh, and there was a very big research in Morocco that was done saying, if I give you money as a parent to be used for your child's education, the chances are that you'll actually use that money for your child's education. As opposed to me saying that first enroll your child and then come and claim for the reimbursement, it didn't work the same. So when you give people the freedom and you allow them to choose, at the same time leveling that money for a particular purpose, it's been researched that it actually increases the chances for that money to be used for that purpose. Which is very interesting, because I think as l and professionals, it probably brings a new paradigm of the way that we use our investments. What if, and many of you might be testing those grounds, what if you could actually give that investment to the employee and give the complete freedom? What will it happen? I don't know. And maybe some of you are experimenting with that already. So the concept of mental accounting, I think, allows us to think about how we use our budgets differently, and I want to leave that with you to reflect. The second principle is uh, about my favorite. How many of us have done a New Year resolution and, and broke it? True to your heart. OK, good. All of us. You know, how many of us have stopped doing New Year resolutions completely? All of us also. Wonderful. So what's interesting about Richard's work is that he actually uh, analyzed why does that happen? Why with the best intent we want to do what's best for us, but why we consistently fail to actually deliver on that promise that we made to ourselves, which is a very interesting, again, irrational, but yet predictable and hence modable behavior. His hypothesis is that we are not just one persona, we are two personas. So one is the planner persona, which has all this, you know, logical, uh, rational uh, planning, says, you know, I'm going to, you know, stop smoking, or I'm going to start going to the gym, or I'm going to make sure that I learn these this new, new skills, I'm going to invest so many hours a week in learning, I'm going to read these books, and I'm going to, you know, connect with these 10 people, and I want them to mentor me. So all that is the planning self. Now, the other self we have is the doing self, or in this case, the not doing self, which basically is the one who fails to deliver on that plan. So what his recommendation uh, is for policymakers, and, and I'm extending that to each one of us because in a way we are policymakers in our organization when it comes to learning and culture. His advice to us is to say, when you're thinking of initiatives, think about both the personas. 
think about what are the nudges, what are the things that I'm going to do to connect with both of your personas. Because I think a lot of the work we do as LD professionals is connected to the first persona, which is how do I help you plan better? How do I give you the tools to do it? How do I give you the technology to do it? But are we really focusing on the second part of the self, which is how do I, by still giving you the freedom, how do I provide nudges that will really, really trigger you to do the things that you yourself want to do? Right? So I think that's a very interesting thought process for us to also think differently. On anything that we're doing in our L&D uh, field today, are we taking into consideration that second part of our persona, which is the learner-doer? Right? Is this something we could do differently to nudge people into achieving the plans of learning? Anybody thinks that anybody in your organization uh, comes to office and thinks through his own career and say, I really don't want to learn anything. Is there anybody in the room who says, people really don't want to learn? Anybody in the room? Great. Obviously not. So I think the important part for us to reflect is, what does behavior economics teaches us on how we know people will be irrational, but at the same time will be predictably irrational, so we can do something to support that. So these two stories are just uh, an opportunity for us to start thinking about the learning journey uh, of today. A very, very warm welcome to People Matters LND Annual Conference. It's my privilege to welcome you all. This is our seventh edition. And year after year, I've seen this community growing. Year after year, I've seen uh, the way we bring the community together changing, the formats changing. And it's always a great joy to, to host the LED community because it's always the most playful community, it's always the more hungry community, and it's always the, the community that allows us to experiment the most. So thank you so much for being here and we look for a fantastic day ahead together. Before I take you through some of the agenda points and, and, and some of the big announcements that I want to share with you today, we're going to do a small activity uh, and we always love to start our events with a round of introductions. Of course, this is too big a room to do a round of introductions, uh, but we can still do it in a, in a, in a way that it's playful. Uh, how many of you have participated in the bingo activity in People Matters events? Okay, great. So you will be my champions because I need your help in make sure that we are able to execute this in a large uh, group of people. So where, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you just three steps which you need to help me with. Step number one, each one of you will have a card in your deck. Yes. So every, if you don't have a card, can you raise your hand and we'll get somebody from our uh, People Matters team to bring you one. Right? Everybody, everybody has a card? Just keep your hand up. Somebody will just come to you shortly. So step number one is to get there some hands also in the front if we can get some cards available. Wonderful. So step number two is to just listen very carefully to the instructions. We only have five minutes to do this activity. Uh, so the instructions are going to be the following. I'm going to request you to have five conversations, ideally. Uh, we could have three minimum, but ideally five conversations. So meet five new people, uh, people who you haven't met before. So people who work with you or you met already doesn't count. You need to go and find five new people. Deal? Now, what you need to do in that conversation is say, you know, introduce yourself. My name is Esther. I'm CEO and editor in chief of People Matters. Uh, and one question I want you to reflect on: What is the one skill you wish everyone in your organization will have today? Right. So it will be in pairs. So I'll say, My name is Esther. I'm editor in chief of People Matters. And the one skill that I would like my team, everyone in my team, to have, as I was reflecting about it, to me is really about problem solving. That's the skill that I will want to pick up right now, in my mind. Similarly, your colleague will say the same thing, his or her name, designation, company, and he or she will also share what is the one skill that he or she feels will be very, very important for everyone in the organization. Then you'll quickly exchange thank yous, and then you'll move to the next person and try to have minimum three conversations, maximum five. Right? Any questions? Any clarifications needed? No? Good. So you're going to have only five minutes to do this activity. And before I uh, give you the go ahead, I just have one commitment. And here I'm talking to the, I'm trying to talk to the second self. 
not the rational self, but the irrational self. Because every time I request the group to say, when I say time is up, will you all please come back to your seats? And the rational self say yes. And the emotional self forgets about it. And then I take actually 30 seconds to bring you all. So am I, I'm talking to the irrational self right now. So may I request the irrational self to raise the hand and say, yes, I will come back when Esther says time is up. Can I have the hands up? All right, so I'm, I'm addressing the irrational self. Now let's see if this works, I've never tried. But I want to see whether actually there's a change in behavior or not. Yeah, are we ready? Yes? So time is up for yourselves. Go move around the room, go find five people that you haven't met yet. this now. Last 10 seconds, 
and the moment of truth is coming now. All right. Everyone, time is up now. Thank you. Thank you. You will be able to continue those conversations during the breaks. So you'll have the whole day as we go through the agenda to be able to complete those conversations. Thank you. Can I have everyone's attention back? Thank you. Thank you so much. The backbenchers, can we have everyone's attention? Can you nudge the backbenchers? Thank you. All right. Okay, how many of us were able to have at least three conversations? Wow. Okay. Four conversations? All five conversations? So what were you doing for that long? <laughs> Wonderful. Great. So I'm very excited to uh, keep these with you. I think this is uh, very important for a particular reason. You will have to, uh, during the break, I invite you all to uh, deposit this car in the Harappa stall. We have a very interesting and amazing and exciting uh, prize, which is going to be four nights in Ladakh. Disclaimer, Harappa team and People Matters team cannot participate, but everyone else can. So please drop the picture car into the Harappa stall. And I think at 1.30, Zinia will tell you the details, but the reality is that we can all, one of you will be able to go to, to Ladakh. And there are more prices as well. So don't forget that. OK, very quickly in the last, in the next few minutes, I want to take you about, I want to take you through the concept of infinity. You will see that throughout the conference today. And for us, infinity is the visual language for our learning conference because it represents eternity, it represents sustainable, long-lasting impact. And I think that's what we believe you bring to the organization and that's what learning stands for. So you will see that throughout the learning journey of, of the day. Very quickly, I'm going to take you through the last piece that I want to share with you. Uh, I had some more data to share with you, but I think that will be covered as we go through the day, so I'm skipping that. There's one interesting point that as learning leaders I want to bring to your notice. And I've been an HR professional all my career before uh, People Matters happened. And the reality is as, as learning professional, as HR professional, the amount of time we invest in ourselves the amount of time we invest in transforming our own skills. Sometimes, I think, maybe it's uh, what Richard was talking about on the second self. You know, we may plan, but I don't think we do as well of executing. And yes, these are four data points that we did study in our uh, HR technology study this year. We went to the community and we asked the community how you're using technology, how you're leveraging technology, what's the ROI of technology, but we also asked them one question. How are you upskilling your HR team? Now, four very scary data points came along. One, only 23% of organizations have a formal learning for HR, which to me is a very, very scary statistic. Second, 64% of companies don't even have a budget to send people like yourselves to get exposed in events, conference, learn from each other. So you are definitely the lucky 36%, but there is a reality out there on how organizations don't even have a budget for something that is actually so less uh, required of structure. Only 19% have a formal budget to allow experimentation, and I'm hoping that Ravin will speak about that in his session uh, later this morning. And only 19% have a budget to allow HR professionals to register themselves into content memberships. So I want to leave you with that reflection because that's really core to People Matters raison d'etre. I think the reason why People Matters exists is to help the community to bridge the gap between what we do as HR and learning community from what the business expects from us. And we do that through our conferences, we do that through our roundtables, our, our research, and so on and so forth. But we feel that's not enough. So it's my privilege to share with you one new offering, one new product that we're bringing to the community. We call it People Matters Fear. We took a very long time to bring a mobile-based product to our community because we wanted to make sure that that was relevant to you, that was not just one more app on your 
phone, but something that can really, really impact the way that you operate. So the name is People Matter Sphere. The whole focus is on the need of making that information relevant, on making sure that that information is insights, opinions, and it's an actionable analysis, and it's crisp. So I invite you all to go to your app store and download People Matter Sphere. You will see four things. One, you will see you'll only get five stories a day. And I'm telling you, as an editorial team, that's really tough. Just five stories a day. Second, those stories will not be more than 200 words each. Again, as an editorial team, very difficult. Third, you will only be able to go back to the stories of five days ago. There is no archives. That's the whole point of relevance. If you missed it, and it was last week, then it's irrelevant. You can find it somewhere else, but it's irrelevant for you right now. Fourth, the amount of actions you can do in the app, and again, going back to nudge principles, we have reduced the number of things you can do, so you can actually focus on what really matters, which is keeping yourself updated daily. So we hope that with this new product, we are talking to both your personas, the logical persona that wants to keep itself, himself, herself updated, but also we want to nudge it, make it so simple, reduce the friction so much that hopefully will enable you to execute into that plan as well. So there'll be a very exciting activity in the People Matter Store. I invite you to go there and experience it. Um, I think there's also some exciting prizes for all of you who download the app and give us a, a review on the App Store. Good review. Feedback you can give offline to, to me personally. I think it's an endeavor. It's, of course, a journey, and I'm sure we will be able to improve a lot as we go through the journey, but it's a starting point to help you be up to date. So thank you very much. Enjoy the day, and I look forward to interacting with all of you. Thank you.